In the opening scene, we see Kara and Ben meet up in the library for New Year's Eve. Excitedly, he asks her about the paper bag in front of her, so she opens it up and reveals the mock-up of her book. He lets her know that he's proud of her but she asks him not to rush since the reader has to get approved with a couple of changes on the way, and a new ending. Surprised to hear that she'll be changing the perfect ending, he can't help but wonder why. However, he says nothing of it and promises to read it and return it to her. We walk out of the elevator and see Megan, Kara's best friend at work. Her assistant Ethan comes to tell her that they need to do some more cover shoots. She asks him to do some things to achieve that, but most importantly she asks him to send Ariana's publicists some flowers as a way of supporting them at challenging times. Exhausted from all the chores they have to do, Ethan comments on it but she lets him know that he'll only have a productive afternoon. As they're looking through some potential logos, Ben reveals that he's got himself a meeting with Porter Mason. However, the meeting is in Clara Lake where they plan to have a vacation. Still, Kara assures him that it's fine as she'll invite Megan to keep her company since she needs a vacation as well. Walking into her boss's office, Megan hands her the two final cover print layouts. Sindra thanks her and Ethan for the great work and wishes them a fantastic New Year's Eve. However, Megan notices a board on Sindra's screen and asks about it. Sidner reveals that she's looking for some travel patterns for the travel section to attract more readers. Interested in the topic, Megan tells her boss they'll be happy to help even though Ethan doesn't look so happy about it. As they leave the office, he lets her know that she always says yes but she assures him that they will finish the work in no time. They spot Amanda, so Megan takes the opportunity to ask her about Kara's book review, and even though Amanda tells her that she's almost finished, it doesn't look like she's impressed. Kara calls at the right time to ask her about the dress fittings for the party, and Megan says that she can't come since she's working. However, Kara tells her that she's leaning towards leopard print, so Megan runs to her house. Seeing all of her amazing dresses, Megan wonders why she's so nervous, so Kara reveals that it's her first New Year's Eve with Ben. After searching, Megan finds a perfect dress for Kara and when she tries it on, she looks gorgeous. Interested in her love life, she asks whether she's found a plus one, hinting about Sean, but Megan reveals that she hasn't. We see them at the party next and as they're toasting for their failed resolutions, Sean joins them. Seeing it as an opportunity to get them back together, Ben and Kara leave them alone still working for the magazine, and she asks him whether he's still a surgeon. A moment of silence follows before they start apologizing to each other about the missed phone calls and emails. The atmosphere gets comfortable, so she suggests they get a glass of wine. Their evening goes great as they indulge in a conversation and fill in on things they missed out. Feeling the vibe, Megan asks him whether he's busy after New Year's and he reveals that he's moving to a new city for work. The countdown for the New Year begins as Ben brings Kara a glass of champagne. As the countdown ends, every couple shares a New Year's Eve kiss while Megan and Sean are left to toast their glasses. The following day, Megan and Kara catch up and Kara convinces Megan to come to Clara Lake at least for one day by mentioning all the Swiss cheese and Belgian chocolate they ate when they were there. While Megan is happy to be returning to where she and Ben first met, Ben can't help but be concerned about the new ending of the book. In the end, the couple separates, and that concerns him because the couple resembles them as the man has the same initials as him. Sean thinks that he's overthinking it and he agrees with him. Once he sees Kara walking toward him, he ends the call and they pack their suitcases. Even before they begin the ride, the good news comes from Megan as she confirms that she'll be coming to the lake for one day to do some work for their travel blog. On their ride, Ben practices his proposal as he'll have to pitch it in the afternoon. They get to Clara Lake and as they're walking to the chalet they can't help but wonder how it's already been a year since they first met in that exact chalet. They walk in and as they're about to share a kiss, Ethan and Megan walk in as well. Ben wastes no time and asks Kara whether she's forgotten something, and Kara gets the hint that they should set up Megan to go see Sean. Knowing that she says yes to everything, Kara asks Megan whether she remembers where the infirmary was as she needs some medical tape for her ankle intending of getting her to go there, and luckily for her Megan says that she'll be going to get some. As Ben sets up some food for the fire, he searches for his lighter and remembers that he left it in his pocket, so Kara goes to get it. However, after reaching into his pocket, Kara pulls out a receipt from the jewelry store and immediately concludes that Ben is planning on proposing to her. Over at the infirmary, Megan sees no one at the counter, so she makes it known that she'll be getting some medical tape. Both Sean and Megan are surprised to see each other at Clara Lake, but what's more surprising is that Sean reveals that he's working there. Sitting around the fire, Ben and Kara enjoy a glass of red wine when he remembers that he has something for her. Getting on one knee, he searches in the pockets of his vest and pulls out her favorite pineapple wine charm. Relief runs over as her first thought was that he was going to propose to her. As their interaction hadn't been awkward enough, Megan and Sean shared an awkward hug. He lets her know that he moved to the ski resort for a less hectic work environment when she gets a text message. She tells him that work never stops but he suggests putting her phone down once in a while. Finally, Megan asks for the medical tape for Kara, and Sean outs himself by saying that Kara and Ben told him that she was not going to come, revealing that they knew he worked there. 
Trying his luck, Sean invites her for a cup of coffee but Megan suggests he comes with her to the chalet to say hi to everybody. As they're preparing dinner, Ben asks about the new ending and she tells him that she's leaving something for the sequel. He suggests they should have ended up together, but she tells him there isn't any rush. Megan returns to the chalet with Sean and reminds Carr that she didn't mention that Sean was working at the infirmary. Ethan walks down the stairs, and Sean gets vividly suspicious of whether he is Megan's boyfriend. Kara notices the tension, so she asks Ethan about his girlfriend, emphasizing the fact that he has one. Megan tells them they need to go out and shoot some pictures while it's still daylight, so Kara suggests Sean goes with her as well. Being there for only three days, he admits to not knowing many places but they tell him that he's been there three more days than her. Going outside to get some fresh air, Kara knows that she'll be followed by Megan. Megan reveals that she knows what Kara is doing, but Kara acts oblivious. Being left alone with her bestie, Kara takes the chance to tell her about the receipt from the jewelry store she found in Ben's pocket. However, she reveals that the price was too low for it to be a ring, but it could have been enough for a resize. Adding up the clues, the besties agree that it only means a proposal as they jump up and down in joy. The men talk about the proposal as well, and while Sean is skeptical of Kara not finding out, he's right but Ben is convinced that he's got it all covered up. His surprise will consist of flowers and even a custom gown he got in her size, and, of course, his mother's ring he got resized. Little does he know that just outside the cabin, Megan and Kara are making plans on how to get her to act surprised when the time comes. As Megan, Ethan, and Sean leave for work, Ben gets ready for his meeting with Porter, but lets Kara know that he has a surprise for her after it. Immediately thinking about the proposal, all she can say is cool, which makes Ben wonder why she said that. On their way to the mountain, Ethan realizes that he forgot to take some of his light equipment, so he decides to go back, leaving Sean and Megan alone once again. Looking over the ski slope, Kara spots a lady struggling to get up on her snowboard, but little does she know who that woman is. Getting to the designated place, Megan can't help but comment on the beauty of it. Wasting no time, Ethan starts taking pictures immediately but Megan keeps hovering over him. Noticing that she's getting in the way of Ethan's work, Sean asks her to come with him so he can show her something. They walk further from Ethan, only for him to reveal that he took her there only to stop her from hovering over him. He even demonstrates which makes Megan smile, and it results in a snow fight. Trying his luck once again, he lets her know that he has the first shift the following day and asks her whether she'll like to grab a cup of coffee afterward. Unfortunately, Megan reveals that she'll be going back to Seattle the following day. On the ski slope, we see Kara sliding down as she's testing Ben's new snowboard. Coming down to his, she lets him know that it's amazing as they head to the cafe for a hot chocolate. Kara asks him about the meeting, but he lets her know that it got rescheduled. So, she asks for the surprise, and once again, she expects the proposal. Ben begins by saying that he's forever grateful for her because she inspired him to do the thing, so she gets excited waiting for him to pull out the red box from his bag, but instead, he pulls out a helmet. Disappointed and impressed by the product, she hides her disappointed face and congratulates Ben on the amazing creation. In the evening, the besties sit down to discuss their day. Kara feels like a fool for believing that he would propose and thinks that she came out as rude when he introduces his idea. However, Megan's day had been amazing as she admits to having forgotten how funny, smart, and handsome Sean is. Ben takes his concerns to Sean, who believes that he has nothing to worry about. However, Sean worries about Megan and her returning to Seattle. As they're planning their ride back, Megan sees Sean from a distance, and he gives her the desire to stay a little longer. Going into his office, she approaches him after he's done with the patient, only to let him know that she's staying longer because she needs to explore more of Clara Lake to know how good it is. He can't believe that she's staying longer and his excitement is evident. Seeing the same lady struggle with the snowboard once again, Kara decides to approach her this time and offers her snowboarding lessons. The woman, named Lisa, agrees to it immediately so they head to the store to buy the appropriate boots. After finding the perfect pair, Lisa takes the chance to get to know more about Kara. Kara does the same, and she even asks why she wants to learn snowboarding at her age. Lisa reveals that her youngest child is graduating high school. Therefore, she has realized that time flies fast and wants to defeat her fears. Ben joins their conversation and assures Lisa that she's in good hands. Seeing the young couple in love, Lisa reveals that she's an event planner for weddings, which makes Kara uncomfortable. Back at the cabin, Megan checks with her boss whether it's okay for them to stay a couple of days more, and not only does she let them stay for the weekend, she asks them to shoot some videos as well. Megan is vividly excited but Ethan seems to be fed up with the additional work. As Ben gets ready for his rescheduled meeting, he talks to Kara about her book. She seems to be nervous and the book isn't even released yet, so Ben assures her that when it does it will be loved by everyone. She wonders how he started from zero and built a company with so much confidence, and he lets her know that some rash decisions paid off. She tells him that he should make more rash decisions, hinting at the proposal. Megan and Sean are enjoying some food when he asks her whether she had a great time with him the previous year. She says yes, and that gives him the strength to ask her whether she would like for them to retrace their steps, and repeat what they've already done. 
Sean's phone rings and he talks to a girl named Nikki. Hearing him talk to a girl upsets her but she's relieved once she finds out that it's his niece. He remembers that he has to hang out with Nikki the following day but Megan tells him that it's fine since she has a lot of work to do. However, Sean invites her to join them as Nikki would love to meet her. While Megan and Sean seem to be having a good time, Ben gets his meeting rescheduled once again as Porter gets an important call before they start. Lisa, Cara, and Megan enjoy some traditional food, and Megan checks the list of tastes. Cara jokes about her coming over more often, and Lisa guesses that she has a crush on a guy who works at Claire Lake. Megan claims that spending time with him is like a fantasy, but once she returns to Seattle, she'll be back to reality. However, Lisa lets her know that it's her stopping the fantasy from becoming reality. Cara laughs but Lisa takes a swing at her as well. Thinking that it's not a big deal, Cara discards the situation as a misunderstanding. But Lisa tells her that maybe she's the one giving out the wrong signals. Later in the evening, Megan receives a call from Amanda, letting her know that the report on Cara's book is not 100% positive, so she feels bad for her bestie. On the other side of the cabin, we see Cara with Ben upset. He reveals that his meeting got rescheduled again but she assures him that the following day is promising, and that he is worth every bit of the wait. The following day, Megan finally meets Nikki who seems more interested in getting to know more about Megan's job, than spending time with her uncle. Megan is more than thrilled to show her everything interesting about her job, and they even talk about some famous people she's met as Nikki is trying on some snowboarding boots. She heads to the back to find her size, and Megan reveals that it's nice to be reminded how good her job is, given that she's been mostly stressed about Kara's book review. As they're talking, Kra walks into the store. But when she hears them talking about the review, she hides and listens carefully. Megan lets Sean know that the book review had been negative, and we see Kara's face filled with concern. She heads to the library where Ben reminds her that her book will be on the shelf one day. However, she tells him about the book review but reveals that she hasn't read it yet. Ben is sure that her book is great but she is sure that her dream will only remain a dream. Taking some books from the shelves, he tells her all the bad reviews they have gotten, but are still standing on the shelf as one of the greatest pieces of literature. It brings a smile to Kara's face as he reminds her that if it's in her heart, no one can touch it. As they're headed to the hill to snowboard, Nikki runs off and Sean gets worried about what her mother would say. Megan asks him to relax, reminding him that's the reason he moved to Clear Lake. Sean admits that he moved because of that, but also because he was the happiest when he was there. After snowboarding all day, the trio has a trivia night where they play a game of trivia, and end up winning a prize. It is time for Nikki to go, and Megan tells her that it was a pleasure meeting her, so the little girl embraces her in a hug. She hugs her uncle as well and lets him know that he was right about Megan. Curious, Megan asks him what she meant by that, and he says that she was an excellent trivial player. Returning to the cabin, Megan looks through Ethan's pictures of their journey so far. He shows her the pictures of her and Sean and suggests they show traveling through emotion, and how it touches our hearts. Seeing real emotion between her and Sean, she can't help but wonder whether that's all they'll ever be, as she confides in Kara. Noticing that she's not herself, Megan asks what's going on, so Kara reveals that she heard her and Sean's conversation about the book review. Feeling horrible, Megan promises not to let them post it, but Kara tells her that she will never exploit their relationship like that. In the morning, Kara sees Ben working and asks him about the meeting, However, he reveals that it hadn't happened yet. To help his business, she decides to try it out on someone who doesn't know how to snowboard and see whether it'll be helpful. Meeting up with Lisa, she gives her the snowboard, as well as the helmet to help her with the ponytail. They start slow and easy, and eventually, Kara lets Lisa down on her own. Instead of failing, Lisa successfully slides down the slope and stops at the end. Lisa thanks her for the snowboard and lets her know that she'll be getting one, so Kara responds with everyone starts somewhere. Coming up with a great idea, Kara rushes to pitch the idea to Ben. Every snowboard is used by a beginner which gives them a great hook to keep the prices low. All that's left is for Ben to come up with a name. Sitting by the fire, Sean and Megan come to terms that they'll have to separate soon. Curious, Megan asks him whether he ever thinks about why they didn't work out in Seattle, and he thinks that it's because they were busy. Megan admits to overworking herself because she's afraid that she'll be left with no work, so he suggests that they may be working a bit too much and that's why they didn't work. Over at the cabin, Ben finally gets the courage to ask Kara about the book ending with separation, and she reveals that her publicist had asked her to change it, thinking that it's not a big deal. However, he can't help but feel like the characters are based on them, and that is when Kara realizes that he didn't propose to her because of it, but she assures him that they're not. He is still not convinced as he believes that she's trying to answer a question to herself by separating the characters. She knows that everyone gets cold feet but asks him not to blame the book for it, he realizes that she's talking about the proposal, and she finally reveals seeing the receipts from the jewel store. The whole thing wasn't going to be a surprise for Kara, and while she thinks that it's not a big deal, he is upset over it. At the sauna, he confides in Sean and reveals that he's always been his idol. However, Sean compares himself to a duck swimming, telling him that he looks calm on the surface, 
but in reality is as nervous as the legs swimming. Kara talks to Megan about it, who finally opens her eyes and Kara realizes that the character is based on Ben. Kara claims that she wants to get married to Ben, but Megan lets her know that they sometimes sabotage things to avoid the risk of getting hurt. As she says that, she realizes that resonates with her and Sean's relationship. However, she snaps back once she hears Kara calling herself stupid. She lets her know that she is one of the smartest people with a great book, as she slides the laptop to her, so she can read the review, claiming that it's not that bad. The book is about looking within and breaking through the outer shells, the armor we wear daily to uncover the truth inside. The whole book resonates with Kara's life, in the end, the characters forget their lesson about the heart overpowering the fear, which is exactly what she and Ben have done. Finally valuing his worth, Ben calls Porter and asks him to come in 30 minutes, or he will find someone else to work with. Kara approaches him to apologize and wish him good luck, but when she tells him that Lisa liked his snowboard over the Sparks one, the boards that her husband makes, they both realize that Lisa is Porter's wife. Kara rushes to get to Lisa while Ben stretches the presentation for the board. As Megan's getting a last slide down the mountain before she goes, her boss calls to let her know that she loves their work and asks her to work on the production of it. Finally, she lets her heart overpower the fear as she rejects working on something for the first time, even surprising her boss. Continuing with her snowboarding, she loses control and accidentally bumps into someone, luckily for her, it's Sean. Bumping into each other reminds them of the first time they met, so they laugh and talk about it. Ben presents the wing, the board for everyone to porter, but he asks to see it in action. It is just the thing Ben was waiting for, as they get to the window, they see Lisa snowboarding without a problem, letting her heart overpower her fear. Porter stares amazed as Ben's vision comes to life. As the ladies return from snowboarding, Porter makes up his mind, and they shake on him producing the boards, as well as the helmets. Megan and Sean sit at the infirmary when he asks her to take things seriously, as he plans to move back to Seattle and return to his job. She agrees as she's realized that work was getting in the way of her being with him. They lean in for a kiss but Sean's phone rings, breaking them up. However, it is good news as Ben asks them to help him with the proposal. Later in the evening, Kara, unaware of what's about to happen, sits for a while with Megan before going to the cabin. As she leaves, Megan can't help but smile in excitement for her best friend. Walking into the cabin, Kara sees a pathway of roses that lead her to the book they bonded over when they met. Looking up, she sees a beautiful gown in the corner. Putting on the gown and having the book in her hands, she follows the path of roses as it brings her to Ben. Dressed up in a tux, he gets closer to her and lets her know that she is the most unbelievable person he's ever met. And while he doesn't know how their story goes, he is sure that they'll have a happy ending. Getting down on one knee, he asks her to marry him, and with tears falling down her eyes, she says yes. They share a passionate kiss to celebrate their engagement while having their best friends by their sides. 